Senator, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me, Tony. Let me start with the most basic question. We're going to go back to, uh, to civics, but I think it's important for our conversation. That is, what is the Senate filibuster when it comes to legislation and why is it important? Well, in short, uh, the Senate filibuster is that mechanism which protects minority rights, protects uh, those United States senators who want to ensure that our country does not fall victim to fleeting and intemperate majorities. Uh, that happens through simple democracies, uh, simple majorities, uh, which occur in the House of Representatives. Therefore, a rule has been put in place for generations which requires a supermajority of United States senators to end debate on any given issue in the United States Senate. Right now, one United States senator could indeed um, have himself or herself heard on an issue uh, about, about which they care deeply and have a deep conviction. Uh, that could all end. That generations old precedent could end. That 60 vote threshold to end debate and then bring a piece of legislation to the floor of the United States Senate subject to a simple majority vote could be eliminated uh, through a simple majority vote of uh, the Democrats. That is what Chuck Schumer and so many liberals are pushing for uh, in today's America. And that is precisely why I'm before you today so that we can speak out against that and prevent all the far left fallout that we know will occur should the Democrats elect to eliminate the filibuster. And just so folks know from a historical perspective, up until the 1970s, that threshold was, uh, I think, 75 votes. Um, that were 70 or 75 votes. So it was even higher. It was lowered to the present 60. But it's always been the Senate chamber that is kind of the stabilizing force for our government. So things, as you pointed out, can't change on a whim. You have to build consensus, and you have to show that you have um, you know, a clear ruling majority that agrees with an idea. If not, it's kind of like what we see with um, increasingly with each change of uh, White House administrations. For instance, uh, take one example, uh, the Mexico City policy. You get a Democrat, they do away with it. You get a Republican, they put it in place. And when you start doing that on everything, our allies are going to have a hard time building long-lasting relationships with the United States. Well, that's, that's exactly right, Tony. So when I think of the filibuster and its importance, uh, it, it's not just isolated to discrete policy issues, though it is that. When we think about the importance of life, when we think about the importance of protecting uh, our right to keep and bear arms, all of our fundamental liberties and, and freedoms. Uh, but it's, it's uh, more broadly about the importance of forging compromise. It's a forcing mechanism that incentivizes members of the United States Senate to work with people who have a different perspective uh, as it relates to some of our most important issues. It also leads to comity, uh, that is civility, between members of the United States Senate. We don't see enough civility in today's day and age. Perhaps if we'd spend a little more time listening to one another uh, and, and trying to empathize with one another's opinion, we could make more forward progress without fundamentally changing the structure of the United States Senate. And of course, as I uh, indicated, um, it, uh, it leads to compromise. Compromise is not always bad. Uh, one can engage in principled compromise on all manner of different issues. In fact, that's what the American people want from their legislators. They want us to stand firm on issues uh, on which there is no compromise possible, but they also want us to identify common ground where it can be found, uh, the, the filibuster uh, and the 60 vote threshold uh, facilitate that sort of governance. You know, Senator Young, that's an extremely important point that you bring up, because what would move the Senate from, from a leadership body of doing what is in the best interest, interest of the nation to a reactive body uh, that can be uh, tossed to and fro based upon the latest political wins or whatever agenda the media chooses to drive? You think about our founding fathers, and, and they most certainly intended the United States Senate to be uh, an assembly of grown-ups, an assembly of statesmen, and in the modern day, of course, stateswomen, uh, who, uh, 
who would not make their decisions quickly, uh, who would uh, deliberate before they acted impulsively and impetuously and, and uh, thoughtlessly. Uh, and in the words of, of James Madison, uh, who would refine and enlarge the views of the electorate. That is, uh, we are not supposed to just follow the mob. We're not supposed to just follow whatever 50% plus one of the electorate believes on any given issue in order to elevate ourselves through these elective positions that we are blessed and honored to have. Instead, we're supposed to take into account all the various perspectives of our constituents and then advance the common good. That, after all, is, is the purpose of a republic, our form of government. And the United States Senate in the, in the filibuster plays a really important role in that, uh, in that uh, filling out that mission in, in the modern day. Uh, Senator, I want to get you to speak to a mo for a moment to the issue of the hypocrisy we see uh, coming from some on the other side of the aisle. Uh, Senator Cory Booker, uh, before said we shouldn't be doing anything to mess with the filibuster. But now he is saying the filibuster has to be reformed. Uh, Senator Ed Markley said before, when Democrats ruled uh, return to the majority, we'll still restore the 60 vote margin. Now he's saying the filibuster was created so that slave owners could hold power over government. Uh, you know, is the filibuster racist? I mean, the Democrats used the filibuster 327 times in 2020, but now it's a Jim Crow relic. How do they say that with a straight face? Tony, I, I won't speak to specific colleagues' comments, but let me just say I cannot reconcile the irreconcilable. Uh, I know there are some incredibly principled United States senators uh, who I pray. And uh, I encourage others to pray, remain strong uh, during uh, these important hours. Kirsten Sinema, she and I disagree on all manner of different policy issues. Uh, she happens to be a Democrat from the state of Arizona. Uh, she has indicated recently that um, she is, at least for the time being, prepared to hold strong and maintain the filibuster. Joe Manchin, for a period of time seem to be holding strong on, on this issue. It's unclear to me where he's going to end up. I would just uh, encourage everyone to pray uh, that they remain strong, to encourage them in this journey because uh, they are indeed experiencing some pressure from the far left. But frankly, that's not an excuse. Uh, when we raise our right hand to uphold the Constitution of the United States and defend this land, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, uh, there is a responsibility that comes with that. And that responsibility from time to time involves doing unpopular things, saying unpopular things, speaking truth to power, the power of one's own constituency sometimes. And it mean means maintaining our constitutional order. So the filibuster must be maintained. Otherwise, all the the ill effects of its own elimination as, as you have itemized, and frankly, as Mitch McConnell has warned the other side, uh, will indeed happen. There's no question. It's a certain Senator, Senator Todd Young, I, I want to thank you for taking time out to join us tonight. But one final question for you. You mentioned praying. We're going to pray. Uh, but what else can our viewers and listeners be doing uh, at this critical juncture? You know, I, I think as they pray, um, each of our constituents can, can lift, up, um, lift up our children, lift up the next generation. This is, this is so much bigger, we forget, in, in this uh, immediate moment uh, than uh, those who cast votes. We speak, all of us, all of us of, of voting age, all of us adults, we speak uh, for uh, the generations yet unborn. We speak for our children and our grandchildren. And we also have a solemn obligation because we're a partnership across generations. We have a solemn obligation to maintain the, the integrity of this republic for those generations past who have passed it on to us. Uh, it is our bequest from them. And um, so we can pray, uh, we can pray uh, about uh, that solemn obligation and remind ourselves and our children uh, of it as well. 
So thank you so much, Tony, for this opportunity. I'm, I'm really appreciative. Uh, Senator, before you go, can I just pray for you and your colleagues? Yes, indeed. All right, folks, join me in, in praying for Senator Young and, and others like him that are standing up and speaking out, and sometimes they're taking a lot of uh, arrows uh, from those who disagree with him. But just pray that they would continue to have a platform to speak uh, and that their voices with great clarity would go forth and people would understand what's at stake. So join me as we pray. Father, I thank you for, uh, for Todd. I thank you, Lord, for his stand. I thank you for where you've placed him and others like him. Uh, who are speaking out on this. And uh, I pray, Lord, that they would have the platform that they need to be able to speak with clarity to this issue. Uh, it, it uh, you know, it's sometimes lost in the weeds. This is kind of a technical issue, but it's not. It, it is speaking to how we're going to be governed and what types of policies will make their way through our Congress, through the Senate. And so, Lord, I, I pray for strength for them. I pray they would not grow weary in, in this what I would say is a spiritual battle. Yes, it's playing out in the political realm, but it's spiritual at its heart. So we pray a blessing upon Senator Young tonight and for his family and for his colleagues uh, and those that stand with him. And uh, Lord, we do pray for the children, that Lord, we would do our part to preserve this great republic, moving it back to you, toward you and your truth, that other generations might enjoy the fruit of freedom. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Senator. Out here. Thank you.